Big Biz Show is on the air. As we move from the Manhandler Hungry Man Dinner to Tron, <laughs> Sully and Costa on the air. Nice job. So, God, didn't that bring you back to the days of emergency? Oh. Hey, Dixie. Oh. <laughs> Remember Dixie in an emergency? Remember that? Emergency was on Friday nights. That emergency yeah. was so good. One Adam 12 and then emergency. Yep. Back to back. That's right. John Gage and uh, Roy. Uh, yeah. John Gage and Roy. Were the paramedics. Yeah. Yeah. And what about, and who were the, uh, one Adam 12 was what? Marty uh, Milner, who, Marty who Milner. by the way, went on to a fabulous radio career on a TV or a radio program, a paid radio program. In other words, he paid to be on the air at first <gasps> yeah. on the weekends yeah. on Mike's station called yeah. Let's, Let's Talk, Talk Hookup. Hook have, have you ever heard of Let's Talk Hookup? No. The fishing, it's it's talk radio about fishing. Wow! And it it's is, almost like as good as Brian Maine, who does uh, Brian Maine does the voices for Biz TV. Yeah. Like, hey, it's the Big Biz. Show. Not, I mean, not our intro, but for all the Big Biz's voiceovers. Yeah. Brian Maine, who hosts a show called Garden Compass. Yes. Yeah. And he was with, and who was who was the fellow that had it for years and years and years? Um, Bruce Ak Bruce Asakawa. Asakawa. Was a nationwide famous gardening guy. Absolutely. Let's do talk radio about gardening. It's like doing talk radio about golf. Okay. Now listen. <laughs> nothing. I mean, <laughs> gee, I wonder if anyone's ever done that. <laughs> do you know how Mike and I met? He, Just like Mike. Here's Mike's fantastic <laughs> idea. Here's Mike's idea. I'm at the. So first of all, I'm out of nowhere, and we go to number one in. It, you know, it, this crazy thing called the Big Ass Biz Show, which is the name of the show at the beginning. Yes. I, I, I was a guest on a local radio station. They said, would you like to do your own show? I said, oh, as long as it's after the market hours. Right. And I started this sort of banter in business, and it was called the Big Ass Biz Show. And then they later maybe changed the title to Big Biz Show. It happens. But I was, we were like, on a real upswing, and this is 1992 or 1990, something. Jeez. It's been a long time. Such a long when time. When did you start there? Uh, yeah, it was in the 90s. Yeah, yep, so. Same time. A couple years in, Mike says, hey, man, I lost my co-host. Did you do anything for the next hour? I've got a golf show that I'd like to do. <laughs> it goes from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. on Friday. Should be a big hit. Thank you. I think we spent an hour talking about how much money we think golfers make. Do you remember? It, I don't even remember. I remember us doing the program a couple times. I don't remember what we talked all about. All I can remember is that you saved my chili in a way that I was, for the rest of my life, beholden to you because I was in it. And it would start, it would embark a journey, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Of me saving Mike's Denison's <laughs> time and time, time again. again. Thank you. <laughs> Yep. No. Um, no. Uh, it was all a scam. Speaking of scams, my good friend Steve Wiseman is a nationally recognized expert in scams, identity theft. He's written how many books? Twelve books, Mike? Uh, like yes, twelve books. His, his website is what again? His website is scamicide.com. Which, by the way, and I'm not just saying this. We were, uh, and God rest his soul, Rusty Nails and I had him on as a guest. He's got to be going on 15 years on this pro program. But we were the ones that said, you got to put together a a clearinghouse, and he did, and, and it's used by millions of people. Mm -hmm. If you go to scamicide.com, every single day there's a scam of the day that he writes about, and then there's everything else. Joining us once again, Steve J.J. Wiseman. Steve, how are you, bud? Terrific. Hey, you got a great band there. Boy, Thank you. Fun. You should, uh, yeah, we should, uh, yeah, I need a, we need a good, don't we need a good attorney? Not there to represent us. I, got, I know a guy in Boston. <laughs> hey, Steve, uh, let's talk about, there's, one thing we used to talk about all the time, and we're going to start doing again, is the is the scams that are happening based upon recent news. Yeah. And um, one of them that you brought out to us many, many years ago is the charity scam. Anytime there is a group of victims, Ukraine, for example, comes to mind. Most recently, the earthquake in Turkey mm -hmm. comes to mind. There's going to be people out there that are going to get in the way of real charitable organizations and have their hand out, and you're going to, and you're going to, they're going to pull at your heartstrings. Sarah McLaughlin's going to sing, and you're going to start paying, but you're not paying to the people you think you're paying. Talk about what's going on right now. Yeah, you know, actually, even going back a little bit, you mentioned Ukraine. There were a lot of them in Ukraine. My, my favorite of the scams 
was a uh, a video on on TikTok, and they were trying to get people to give. And if you looked real closely, you noticed that all the cars on this street had uh, British license plates. So it was going to be in the in the yeah. UK. Apparently. Yeah, it's it's but, almost like looking. It's like when you look, and it's it, you know, and it's called Chase Bank, and there's a D yeah. at the end. <laughs> you know, I mean. But it looks like the same logo. I mean, you have to look. And I will tell you how much money this guy has saved my two daughters when they were in college and my parents, who are elderly, when they, hey, Bob, I just got a call from a guy who said they hijacked our computer. Should I pay him the 5000 <laughs> No, Mom. I mean, honestly, though, but in, in most of this stuff you can see, see in advance, right, Steve? It, it's uh... You really can. And the thing is, unfortunately, it's easy for the scammer. As, yeah. as you know, I used to teach, uh, before I taught here at Bentley, I used to teach in the state prison system. And uh, the prisoners there used to complain, you know, back when we were running our cons and our scams, it took skill to be a counterfeiter or whatever. Now anybody can, like you mentioned, Chase Bank. It's easy to get that logo. It's easy to make the phone call by using spoofing appear on your caller ID as if it's coming from Chase, the logo in your email, the text message, all of that. And uh, with the charities, there's an easy way to, to know if it's legit or not. And the easy way to know is you can't know. And so you can't trust any email, any text message, uh, or any letter or phone call. So what you do is if you think there is someone contacting you that might be legitimate or you want to know where to go, there's a great website called charitynavigator.org. And they'll tell you two things. One, it'll give you whether that charity contacting you or the people saying are legit. But second of all, it will also tell you with the so-called legit charities how much of what they're collecting actually goes towards the charitable purposes. So, you know, right now, a lot of people want to uh, help uh, in regard to uh, the, the Turkish earthquake, and they had another one recently. So you can you can go there and you can find some, some good charities. One of them is called Direct Relief. Another one's Operation Blessing International. And find some place that you can help, you can make that difference. Hey, so, so when we get emails regarding things like... Um, the, the Geek Squad renewal scam, or we get a text message from Amazon when they say your account, and they're spelling account with A-C-O-U-N-T. No, there's two C's in account, if I'm like, I mean, you, uh, literally on the text message, it's misspelled. And, <laughs> yeah. and uh, what are we looking for? It's more than just typos. It, it, you, you've just, you've got to dig a little bit, don't you? I mean, sometimes you have to go to the actual yeah. website and find, find out if it's real, right? Yeah, and you know, the, the thing is, like you said, you you're going to get emails like the Geek Squad renewal that so many people get and Amazon. You know, the chances are you're on Amazon. And so when you get something that appears to come from Amazon, you may trust it, particularly if it tells you there's some kind of an emergency. So the first thing you do is you look at the email address that is sending it, because sometimes what they do is they're pretty lazy and uh, they will use botnets. They will hijack what they call right. zombie computers, a botnet of computers to send this out. So so you're getting an email that's supposedly from Amazon support, and it comes from some guy in Texas. You know that that's, that's a scam. Yeah. The other thing is, you're right. A lot of these scams come from foreign countries. It, you know, we seem to make a joke of it about being Nigeria, but it is true. A lot of them come well, from Nigeria. Well, it was called the Nigerian letter scam. I mean, that, that, that's where it came from. It, the Nigerian it letter the, scam was the name of the one with, that said... Hi, we are being held hostage uh, or something, or, or, or my grandfather died or something. He's got a million dollars coming to you. That, that, and, and I will tell you, there was a documentary, and I don't, they should play it on Netflix if they could, where a group actually traveled there to, yep. to tell them to hand, they wanted to hand them the money to kind of show who these guys were. And, it, and, and apparently it's just, it's, it's going on in every single, every single city. Hey, real quick, I want to talk two things. Uh, the Facebook marketplace scam invol involving Zelle. Zelle's an easy way to send money, safe way to send money from your bank uh, to, you know, versus PayPal versus Venmo. Talk about what's going on with Facebook. That's a, that's yeah. a scary one. <laughs> Well, first of all, the big thing with Zelle and Venmo, all of these uh, these uh, P2P sales, what you want to do is you want to limit those just to people you know, to friends, because the kind of the consumer protection laws don't protect you very much. Zelle in particular, there's been a lot of people that have been uh, defrauded. The one in uh, Facebook Marketplace is you go, you're, you're selling an item, uh, you get told that uh, you're going, the, the person's going to use a Zelle business account, and then you get 
get an email that appears to come from Zelle saying you need to up the price somewhat because in order to qualify for a payment from a Zelle business account, which is a total scam. There are Zelle business accounts, but there's no amount that you have to pay. So you send that money because the, the buyer says, yeah, just send me the money through my Zelle and then I'll just add it back into what I send you. Of course, you send it to them. It's gone. You never get anything. So you only use Zelle. You only use Venmo for friends and family. Don't use it for businesses right now, although they're talking about putting in some federal legislation and new regulations to protect you. You don't have a lot of protection from fraud. Steve, we're all out of time this week, but next week I want you to come talk about Publishers Clearinghouse because Publishers Clearinghouse is not a scam. Thank Go God. Ahead. But people that are being contacted by scammers are using the publisher, Publishers Clearinghouse name. And that's an issue. We're talking about it. Steve, thank you so much. Steve JJ Wiseman, scamaside.com. More big biz coming up.